All right. Yo, what's up? Welcome back. We're talking about the Israelites again. Surprise, surprise. But you know, there's a lot of good lessons to be learned from them. So, the Israelites were traveling, slowly moving closer and closer to the land God had promised to give them. They had been forced to travel around the territory of the Edomites, who would not let them pass through their country. Uh oh. It was hot, it was dry. Traveling wasn't fun, especially after uh, 40 years of it. God's people were cranky and impatient. Can you guess what these cranky and impatient people did? Yep, they started to complain. You know, a classic. A classic staple of the, the Israelites. Even though the Israelites were tired and impatient, they still had enough energy to complain. They accused Moses of bringing them out to die in the desert for like the millionth time. And what did they say about the perfect, miraculous food God had been giving them day every day for 40 years? We hate this miserable food. This food stinks. I want something else. Yeah, they complained again. They didn't like it. God was like, yo, dude, here's some free, awesome food. And they were like, <laughs> this stuff, I don't like it. Even though the people had seen God take care of their needs over and over and over and over even though they had many memories of miracles when God had given them food and water, they weren't grateful. All of their memories were chased away by their worries about what they wanted right now, in the moment. How easy it is to forget all the good things you have been given when the moment, the present, feels a little uncomfortable. The Israelites were so caught up in their complaining that they didn't think of anything else. They said that God's good gifts were bad which just isn't true. They told Moses that he was a rotten leader. They were all wrapped up in their own misery like thousands of wailing babies. You ever heard a baby cry? It can get pretty loud. And it can go on and 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 on. Yeah, that's what the Israelites were like. They just kept going. But suddenly, the people were surprised. Snakes were everywhere. Whoa. They were complaining, ah, and then suddenly snakes, and then maybe the complaining started to turn to screaming. That got their attention. And the snakes weren't garden snakes. They were poisonous snakes. Yikes. What do you think the people did? And what do you think they said? Well, the Israelites didn't have any trouble connecting their horrible words and attitudes with the fact that there were snakes everywhere. Snakes just don't magically appear out of nowhere, and not in this you know, amount. There were a lot. They knew they had sinned. They asked Moses to pray, and so he did. You know, such a 180 turn, flip around. Said, ah, Moses, you stink, God, everything sucks. And then suddenly it's, hey, Moses, you better pray to God because there's a lot of snakes everywhere. So uh, God had some uh, unusual instructions. He said, the Lord said to Moses, make a snake, put it up on a pole, then anyone who is bitten can look at it and remain alive. God could have just healed everyone, but God's plan was a special way to show his love. So Moses obeyed God. He made a snake out of metal and put it on a pole. Then the people had to make a choice. Those people who did not believe God's instructions could choose not to look at the snake, but they would die. But anyone who was willing to look at the bronze snake would not. The, that person would be healed of his or her snake bite. Hooray! So it was all just, hey, I'm God. I'm telling you, this is something that is good. If you believe that it is good, do it, and you will be healed. And those who didn't think it was good wouldn't be healed. Moses and the people must have been so glad that God provided a way for them to be healed of their snake bites. I know I would be. When they were healed, they knew that God still loved them and that their sins were forgiven, even if they complained a lot. Just like the Israelites, we sin too. We disobey God. The good news, that is, uh, yeah, the good news is that although God doesn't take away the consequences of our wrong actions, he does promise to forgive us when we believe in Jesus. And that is a guarantee. When Jesus lived on earth, he talked about this time when the Israelites showed their faith by looking at the bronze snake. Jesus said that when we believe in Jesus as God's son and believe that he died to take on punishment for our sins, then God gladly forgives our sins and we become members of God's family. We each have a choice, reject Jesus or to accept him. And I highly recommend that you accept him because your life 
will be much better off for it. Awesome. Thank you. I will see you guys again next week.